Hi, everyone. This is your girl, Shanidra, once and again with Let's Dig Deep. Today's topic is confidence. My definition of confidence is having confidence in God and knowing that whatever he gives you, you can have confidence. You can bank on that. You don't have to worry about anything. And I got scripture to back that up. So the first scripture is in Luke. Luke, the 21st chapter and the 14th verse. And it reads in the NIV, it says, But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourself. 15. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. So basically what he's saying is, don't be worried about how you're going to say it or how it's going to come out. As long as you pray before and have the confidence in God and knowing that what he said in Luke, the 14th chapter, the 21st chapter, verse 14 um, in 15, it says, but make up your mind. Number one, make up your mind um, not to be wor uh, not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourself. You don't have to defend yourself. That's, that's that confidence. He's trying to give you the confidence in God. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourself. 15, for I, the Lord, will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. So what God gives you, can't nobody come at you or contradict you. He doesn't want you to know scripture by scripture and all it is, oh, let me quote this and let me quote that. He wants it to be in you. He wants you to live it. That's why he calls it the living word because he wants you to live in it. He writes that on your heart. So it's, it's nothing like he said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart, like my son said. Don't worry about it. Uh, John, the 14th chapter, also backs that up. Um, let's get to it. In the 26th verse. And in that one, it says. Let's go to it. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit. It says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything. So what you worry about? That's confidence. You don't have to worry about who's going to come against you. You don't have to worry about none of your adversaries. Read Luke, the 21st chapter in the 14th uh, verse through the 15th verse. He said, don't worry about it. What, what you worried about? What they going to say? They may know scripture. The devil knew scripture. But are they live in the scripture? He said, do not be hearers of my word, but be doers. He don't want you to hear the word and and, and know, oh, um, and Jonah, uh, he got ate by the bed. What, what, what do you know about Jonah? You heard the word. But how how are you living in, in a Jonah situation? Have you became a Jonah before? Because Jonah's problem wasn't, oh, that's the one that got, got um, caught in the belly of the well. Oh, yeah. No, that's not that's not what God wanted you to get out of that. He didn't. That's not you done missed the whole everything. What God wanted you to get out of that is you can't hide from him, period. Jonah didn't want to face doing what God had told him to do. So therefore, God 
let him, you know, think that he could get away or whatever. And Jonah, Jonah thought he could get away. He thought he could hide. He thought he could get out of doing what God had called him to do. And he couldn't. He tried to get on the ship and go. He was supposed to go to Nineveh. He went the opposite way, the total opposite way, trying to run from God. And got caught, basically. You can't hide from God. God knows and see. He knows all and sees all. So you can't hide. So the book of Jonah is not talking about just, oh, yeah, he the one that got trapped in the belly of the whale. Why did he get trapped in the belly of the whale? And it wasn't a whale, it said a fish. So why did Jonah get trapped? What what caused Jonah to get trapped? Because God could have made him, he could have died when he got thrown over the boat, but he did. Because God still wanted Jonah to do out his what he had told him to do. He couldn't escape it, period. You can't escape it. You can't run. You can't hide. That's the whole point in the Jonah situation. People talk about the David. Oh, yeah, David beat Goliath. I can't believe he wasn't scared to beat Goliath. The reason why he wasn't scared because he was in a lion's den and he done went through some trials that he knew he couldn't get out of without God and now that he had the confidence he 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 came strong. He's like, where where Goliath at? Let me let me get that ain't nothing compared to what I've been through. And now that I know what I know in God and I know God got my back, I'm not worried about Goliath. What is a Goliath to my God? My God is bigger than Goliath. Where Goliath at? I got this. Cause he knew who 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 was with him and God will be with him and God was with Joseph and God was with David and God and God. So anything that God tells you to do, he wants you to have that confidence for you to go in with it. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Don't worry about how it's going to play out. Don't worry about none of that. If he told you to do it, you go do it and, and know that it's going to be done. Period. Don't worry about how the end result See, Jonah, he was worried about, oh, my God, he got angry with God. If y'all go into the book of Jonah, Jonah ended up after he did what God said, after God, you know, he repented, God made him do, you know, told him, go ahead. You still got to do what I told you to do. After he got back, I mean, after he got, uh, after he did what God told him and, you know, it got out the purpose, they ended up, you know, repenting and doing better. The um the people did, and um so God didn't kill them. He told he told Jonah to warn them so that so basically if they can do that, or if they did not do that, he was gonna kill them. But Jonah was so worried about what everybody else was gonna think and what everybody else was gonna do that you know that's what made Jonah hide. That's what made him try to run away from God because he was too busy worried about oh what is everybody else gonna think about me or. What is everybody else? Oh my gosh, I can't go back home. You didn't kill them. Oh my gosh. What what are they gonna say? They're gonna they didn't do nothing to Jonah when he came back. And God was like, sit your butt down somewhere. I got this. You too busy worried about what everybody else is gonna say. I told you in Luke 21, 14 through 15, don't worry about it. What you worried for? I need you to have the confidence that me, Shad, Shadrach, and Abednego. Had. They stood firm on me. Me, Shad, Shadrach, and Abednego stood firm. They didn't worship no little golden statue. They said no. Then Pharaoh was like, oh, well, I'm going to uh, put you in the fire and all this and try to, you know, scare them and threaten them. They was like, I don't care. Do what you got to do. I'm not worshiping your God. My Lord and Savior told me not to worship your God, so I'm not. I'm standing firm, like the word said. That's what God wants you to do. Stand firm on what he said. You don't have to know every little bit. You, it's, it, it, it has to be in. You have to read this word so you can get it. And you have to have that relationship with God so he can explain it to you. He can break it down to you. He wants you to be firm like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They stood firm, and Pharaoh was looking at He was like, I thought it was three of them. I see four. 
because God was with him. When you stand firm on God, God will be with you. That's why he wants you to have the confidence. Confidence in him. Not yourself. That's what scared me to have the conversation that I needed to have um, to fix the issue in my family. I was so worried about um, how they was going to react and how they was going to um, respond or treat me after that, that I, I almost did a Jonah. I almost, you know, went the opposite way. I'll play that video after this. Um, but I almost, you know, ran, I almost had a Jonah moment. And because uh, I was like, oh, I'm scared. I don't want to do this. You know, I was more scared of the person then. That, you know, God told me to do it. I needed to do it. I needed to have that confidence like David did when he was fighting Goliath. People was looking at David like he was crazy. Like, no, do you know how big Goliath is? They were like, I ain't worried about that. Do you know what I've been through? He had confidence because he knew who was backing him up. He knew who he had with him. So he had that confidence that I ain't worried about nothing because my God is bigger than anything. God before you, who could be against you? That's the type of attitude God is wanting. He wants you to have that God for this. He said, don't worry about what you're going to say. Don't worry about I, the Holy Spirit, will remind you of what to say. I do so much better when I pray before I speak. Half the time, I don't know. God gives me the word, but half the time, I don't know what is about to happen because God goes before me. And that's what I that's what I love. I don't I don't want to speak. I want whatever God's message to come out is God's message, not not my message. I don't want my message to come out. I want God's message. Whatever he's trying to tell his people, that's what I want to come out. And I have to have the God for dance and to know whatever he tells me to do or say. To have confidence in it, knowing that he got my back. That's what he said in Luke 21, 14 through 15. He got your back. Don't worry about anybody that's going to be against you. He got you. You don't have to worry about that. He wants you to have confidence, which is, in my terms, confidence in God. Don't worry about anybody else. Or what they're going to say. Or what they can do to you. They can't do nothing that he don't allow. The enemy can't do nothing that God does not allow. Period. Period. So you don't have nothing to worry about. What you worry about? Have confidence. The confidence in God. That's all he sent in Luke. Luke the 21st chapter and 14th. He said that in John 14 and 26. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about your adversaries. What you worry about them for? What can they do to you? If I told you to do it, what, what you worried about? Ain't nobody higher than God. So what you, what you worried about? If he told you to do it, just do it. It ain't nothing that they can do to you. Because he got you. And that's what I had to learn. I'm talking confident right now because I know that God got me. I know when he tells me to do something, I have the confidence to know that it may not look right or it may not sound right. That's why he told me not to lean to my own understanding. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. So therefore, what may make sense to me is, is far off from what God is trying to do. It's not going to make sense. Just put that in your head. It's not going to make sense. That's why it's called a miracle. That's why he, he works miracles. Because people are like, wow, how did that happen? That just popped out the blue. So have God for this. Have confidence in God. Quit having confidence in your job. If COVID ain't taught you nothing, it should have taught you that you don't, you shouldn't be too confident in them jobs. I mean, people are losing jobs left and right, scrambling, trying to find another job. Why don't you scramble and try to find your gift? 
why don't you scramble and try to find what God is trying to work in with you? Why don't you allow to let this time be you and God's time? Because you can't, you can't escape it. Jonah tried to escape it. He tried to hide. You can't hide. You can't stop what he has called you to do. So why not take this time? You just prolonging it. Because Jonah still had to do what God told him to do. He just went through extra stuff. And right after he went through the extra, he had to go through the belly. He had to get thrown over the boat. Trying to hide like God didn't see him. So God caused the waters to be so hectic that, you know, he ended up having to be thrown over. The, he thought he was so clever. But he ended up having to be thrown over the, the boat. Then God still saved him. He could have let him drown. But God still saved him because he still wanted him to do his purpose, period. We are all here for a purpose. Whether people want to believe it or not, I've been saying this for three years. That's part of my destined to be is to help people find who they're destined to be because we're all here for a purpose. All of us, not just me, not just some people, all of us are here for a purpose. I'm just like his Barbie doll, basically. Just like how little girls play with their Barbie dolls, how my daughter plays with her Barbie dolls and makes it go wherever it wants. That's that's all God is doing. I mean, you don't do nothing on your own. You can't breathe on your own. You can't wake up on your own. You can't do nothing. So, again, the whole COVID is not going anywhere until people get out of their selves. Die to your flesh. It, I mean, this is sad that this has went nine months and people still don't get it. Oh, why is it not over with? Because you're stubborn, but still won't, you know, you don't want to wear masks. You're too good to wear masks. You're too good to do. You don't want to do the simple stuff. And that's the problem. People don't want to do anything they want god to keep blessing them i said it in a previous video i'll play that as well you want god to keep blessing you you want to he said do not covet your neighbors don't don't covet that's in the commandments might i ask you can look in exodus in the ten commandments um uh, but he told you not to covet that means don't be jealous of what somebody else has. But here other people are. Oh, she over there getting blessed. And, oh, I keep praying to God and I keep, but you don't want to change. She changing. I'm not just getting blessed by just being blessed. No, I have to be obedient. I have to change my ways. I can't be the same old, same old. I can't go off on people anymore. I can't do what I want to do anymore. I don't just get, but I go through trials. But while I'm going through the trials, I know that God got me. So what, what am I worried about? I don't have to worry. He gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. So while everybody's going through this pandemic, I am fine. Because I stay prayed up for one. We read our, we are in our word all day, every day. Me and my children. It's not just me. Because I want them to understand the word as well. I don't want them to just read and, oh, and we tell them the generic and have them um, color in a boat and all that. No, let's talk about how Jonah got into the boat. So you don't do that. So you don't be a Jonah. Don't run away from what God has told you to do. That's what I'm teaching them. What God has instructed me to teach them. Train them up in the way that they should go. That's what I'm doing. By their word. By his word. His God's word. So, again, the title is God for this. I gave you Luke, the 21st chapter, verses 14 through 15. 
And he, ba he basically said, as you can read on your own, as I read at the beginning, he said, don't worry about what you're going to say beforehand, basically. I'm putting it in my own words, but you can read it. I read it already. And because he got you. The Holy Spirit will remind you. So you can have the confidence, which is the confidence in God, knowing that whatever he tells you to say or do, just do it. And know that he got you. The same thing that we tell our children. When they want to keep, but why? I can't, why can't I just run across the street? Everybody else can. Just trust and know that I'm I'm telling you no for a reason. I'm not telling you so you can't play or have fun because I don't want you to have fun. It's because I know what can happen. If you run across that street and the car come flying, then what? And that's all God is saying. Just, just. Know that I have your best interests at heart. Know that I know what what is what I have you to do, what the purpose is for your life. I watched um something on Aliana um and they were talking, it was a commentary about um what they had said about how Ayana uh fixed my life was wrong about how she dealt with Shay and all this stuff. My opinion on that, which that was that person's opinion, but my opinion on that is that they don't understand Ayana. Ayana done been through some stuff, just like David. They didn't understand David. So they didn't understand how David could handle Goliath and defeat Goliath like he did. You know, they they couldn't understand David's way of thinking, his mind frame. But just because your mind frame where David is, David still defeated him. Whether you thought he would defeat him or not, he still defeated him because he, he already knew. He knew he had God. He had that God for this. So he knew whatever God told him to do, how he told him to do it, it was going to work, period. And he knew God was with him. Me, Shad, Shad, Reckon, Abednego knew God was going to defend him. They didn't care how it was going to turn out. They stood firm like the word told them to do. And that's all that Ayana is trying to do. She's standing firm on what God has told her to do. And it may not make sense. How are you going to tell Ayana how to how to run her show and you called her? Obviously, your way ain't working, but you're trying to tell her how you want her to do you. You haven't grew up. It's time to mature. Get out your own thinking. He said, lean not into thine own understanding. Do not lean to your own understanding. Trust her process. If you don't trust her process, why are you there? She's there to bring healing. The lady made a comment, well, she should know how to deal with Shay and she shouldn't have said she wasn't. That's the problem. Shay ain't used to people telling her no or that they're not going to deal with her if she continues on disrespecting them. They're, she's used to people giving in to her. So with Ayana not giving in, which is what Shay needed, she needed someone to stand firm on, you know, not giving in just because she got an attitude or she feeling some type of way. Ayana stood firm and she meant what she said. She was there to heal. And if you ain't ready to be healed, then what am I here for? If you're not going to listen to nothing I have to say, what am I here for? I understand Ayana because part of the reason why I don't even speak to people is because people don't understand me. And since they don't understand me, they're like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't get her or whatever. My thinking is way further than yours. And that's not being cocky or anything. It's just like, don't, don't tell me what I'm thinking because you don't know how deep I'm thinking. My show is less deep, deep because I'm a deep thinker and 
it is a slap in the face um, when somebody tries to tell you as a deep thinker something so shallow, like, oh, you, you, I bet you was thinking this. I'm telling you, what, how are you going to tell me what I was thinking? And and I don't know what I was thinking. It don't make any sense. But again, not to get off subject, I understand Ayana. She's there to heal people. And she can't worry about, again, she has the God for me, honey. She can't worry about her adversaries and what they're going to say about her and how they're going to come. Because she knows that God got her. She has that God for this. And people don't understand her and they're not going to understand her. They don't understand themselves. They don't even, you know, they there to fix their life. But they can't even see that. So, again... I love Ayana. She is a wonderful woman. Um, she has been through some things, just like most of the people in the Bible, just like myself. And going through those things have taught her lessons, and she's trying to help others learn, you know, from her mistakes. She's not saying that she's perfect, and neither am I. But we're trying to help people learn from the mistakes, and she can't be worried about how they're going to feel or whatever when she has to deliver what God tells her to deliver. Period. It just said it in Luke and in John. I gave you two Bible scriptures backing that up. He said, don't worry about your adversaries. He will give you the word. And then the Holy Spirit will remind you. So you don't have to worry. I'm paraphrasing it. You don't have to worry about any. You don't have to worry about your adversaries. And Ayanna don't have to worry about her adversaries because God got her. As long as she is doing what God has told her to do, she can have the confidence in knowing that it don't matter what they saying or being on Shay's side because they don't they don't understand. They not on that level. That's why they coming to her. You not on Ayanna's level. She has a whole level mind frame mindset. That, that you're not on and you're not willing to change. So why is she going to waste her time? That's why I don't talk. People be like, oh, she ain't going to, well, whatever. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to let you think what you want to think because you're going to think what you want to think regardless. I'm fine because I have the confidence in knowing that whatever comes out of my mouth, I'm okay. The only person I'm worried about is God. I'm not worried about nobody on this earth. What they got to say, that was my problem back in the past. Worrying about, oh, God, I can't, oh, God, oh, God. No, from now on, whatever God tells me to do, I'm going to do it. Because I, I love God too much. And I'm not worried about um, what others think. Um, people have told me not to mention God. Um, with my business, that makes no sense to me because I didn't have these visions on my own. I, he's the CEO of my business, so don't ask me any questions about my business because it was nothing but God. So how I come up with stuff, it's not by me. Half the time is completely out of my my area of um, comfort, but I have the confidence in knowing that whatever God tells me to do, I need to just do it and have the confidence in knowing that it's going to work out. It may not look like it right now, but I know eventually he gave it to me. It's going to work out for my good. All things work together for the good of those. So, again, today's title was Godfidence, and I pray that people will have more confidence in God, and don't worry about your adversaries or what other people may think or say. Um, if you know, and if you are afraid of, and you are constantly in the Word, and, and people will know. You can quote Bible scriptures. I have learned. Because I have failed for so many guys. 
that I thought, oh, they know Bible scripture. Oh my gosh, this is a man of God. No. So, and that's not saying that they wasn't man of God. They just wasn't, you know. And just, I just need to remember that, you know, the enemy knew the word. So you just have to be watchful. But you know, when you are in God and you hear from God, you will know. So I've known, I, I've learned um, what's of God and what's not. So have the confidence like David did when he defeated, um, when he beat uh, Goliath. Um, have the confidence like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego when they went against Pharaoh, when Pharaoh was trying to make them uh, worship this golden uh, image this uh, that was against the word. Because they knew that God said stand firm on his word. And they did that. And God was with them. Joseph. He went through all of that. His, his brothers traded him out. All of that. And at the end of the day. He had a confidence. And he knew. That no matter what he went through. And he even thanked his brothers at the end. When God brought them back together, he thanked them because he told them, you just basically played your part. Because, I mean, there's nothing that anybody can do to stop what God, you can't even stop what God has called you to do. You better take Jonah, for example, quit looking at the well and the fish and all that and look at why Jonah ended up in the fish. He tried to run from what God told him to do. You can't run, you can't hide. Like my daughter asks, since Christmas is coming up, she asks, um, can I still, since I know that Santa Claus isn't real, can I still sing Santa Claus is coming to town? And I was like, huh, we can say Jesus Christ um, is coming to town. And I mean, basically what they said about Santa Claus, he um, knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So you better be good or say, you better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you. So she could say, Jesus Christ is coming to town. But we're not, we not talking about that pagan person, Santa Claus. He's not real. And my kids know that they're not real. And it's sad that people will get mad at me for, oh, that's wrong of you to tell them. No, it's wrong of me to be outside of God and tell them about a Santa Claus that ain't real, that can't save their soul or nothing, then to tell them about God, <laughs> it makes no sense. But nevertheless, I hope you understand that it's important to have God for this. And you can't have God for this if you're not living for God. So let me make sure that that's very clear. Because you can't have confidence in something you're not sure about. So it's important that you build that relationship with God, number one. You repent and you stop doing the things that is not of God. You stay in your word. And you stay prayed up. Those are the main important keys. All he keeps saying over and over in the Bible. All of my commandments. Stand firm on my word. As we read in Luke and John, he said, don't worry about your adversaries. I got you. As we've seen over and over in scripture with Joseph's story and God was with him. And even with Jonah, God was with him. Uh, David, God was with him. All, all of these stories, God was with him. So, all God is saying is have confidence in him instead of your job, instead of other people. And I can say that because at the beginning, I thought that, you know, you grow up thinking you need your parents and, you know, but once you are grown yourself, it's time for you to, you know, grow up in God and, and trust in God. And you can't be dependent on your parents and all of that. So he wants you to have the same confidence that you have in your parents. He wants you to have in him the same confidence you have in that job. He wants you to have in him. I have been taken care of 
by God. And I can confidently say that in God because I have been obedient to God. I have done what God has asked me to do. Obedience is the key. Same thing we tell our kids. If you be obedient, all they have to do is be obedient. But that's all I wanted to say. And I hope everybody digs deep within themselves and take time out and take this time that we are going through what we're going through to spend more time with God and to see and seek God and see what he has you to do because we're all here for a purpose. Thanks again, guys.